I don't know why. Good evening, everybody. Uh, call this uh, regular meeting to order for June the 20th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the June 20th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Councilor White is joining us from way up north, uh, where the sun doesn't rest, I guess you can say. And uh, Fire Chief and uh, CFO Ganita is also joining us by Zoom. Welcome. Result of the minutes of the June 6, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Councillor White, there's always a bit of a, a, a lag there, so if you do have something, um, put your hand up or just, you know, you can just interject, okay? Thank you. 4.1. Uh, Delegation we have with us tonight, CFO Ganita and uh, CPA uh, Bruce Hardy with us from Pastor Cole Hardy Company in regards to the uh, uh, 2022 Draft Canada Community Building Fund. So with that, uh, one of you two gentlemen want to proceed? Terry, start with. Okay, CFO Ganita. Share my screen, please. Should be good, Terry. So I started off the uh, year with $1,145,000 in the Canada Community Building Fund, which used to be called the Federal Gas Tax Fund. I received uh, 225000 from the province, earned $26,000 of interest, or earned a spent uh, 205000 on local roads, 9000 on solid waste total expenditures, 214,000, so that beats 1,183,000 on hand at the end of the year. And then there's a column for cumulative that shows since the program started, the province has given the town 3,788,000, and the fund has earned 103,000 in interest and total spent on local roads over all the years, 962,000 drinking water, 503,000, wastewater, 982,000, solid waste, 230,000, and disaster mitigation, 31,000, for a total of $2.7 million of expenditures from that fund. Are there any questions? Any questions? Councilor Medford. What does solid waste refer to? Is that landfill? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anything further? Doesn't appear to be. I'm assuming you know, Mr. Hardy. All right, yes. Um, so this is um, uh, a limited scope audit uh, rather than the full general audits that uh, I usually come here to present. This one is um, just to see if the um, Thomas Whenever has complied with the uh, basically the rules and regulations and, and stipulations of the uh, program. So it starts out that um, we indicate that we have audited Thomas Whenever's compliance at December 31st, 2022, with the criteria established by the terms and conditions of the, uh, and the new name, Canada Community Building Fund Manitoba Municipal Agreement between the province of Manitoba and the town of Swan River. 
formerly it was called the uh, federal gas tax okay. uh, rebate program. The uh, management is responsible for the compliance with the criteria that has been established by the province uh, and by the provisions of the agreement and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to ensure compliance. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance based on our audit. So we conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally, generally accepted auditing standards and those standards require that we plan and perform an audit to obtain reasonable assurance whether the town of Swanover has complied. Uh, and we believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. So therefore, as in the old format of audit reports, our opinion is at the very end. In our opinion, the Canada Community Building Fund Annual Expenditure Report presents fairly in all material respects the funding and expenditures for the year ended December 31st, 2022 in compliance with the um, agreement. Okay, thank you. Anyone with any further questions? Councilor Bobbitt. So that this audit is required by the province? Yes. Thank you. Okay, anything further? Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything further? No questions. Okay, thank you. All right. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And enjoy the rest of your meeting. We will. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Moving on, six communications, 6.1. Result of the 2022 audit engagement letter dated June the 6th, 2023 from Pasico Harding Company Chartered Professional Accountants be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion, all in favor, it's carried. 6.2. Result of the 2022 audit, audit planning letter dated June the 6th, 2023 from Pasico Harding Company Chartered Professional Accountants be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, all in favor, it's carried. Seven, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor uh, Dipper Memorial, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I have a couple questions. Um, oh. The um, ferric sulfate for the lagoon in the financials, it shows, I think, a cost of approximately $15,000. Uh, yeah, so we used uh, a couple of batches so far in the lagoon. How long does that, like when the amount we were billed for, how long does that last? Like how many treatments? Uh, we usually have three to four, three to five per summer uh, batches. Three to five batches at about 15000 a pop? or I believe that's two batches for 15000 but we will treat it as many times as it requires to get to one milligram per liter. Yeah, one milligram per liter of phosphorus. So it just takes as many as it takes. Which brings me to my next question of how are those little um, thingamabobbers, EMF 1000s working? Uh, so the, or the uh, phosphorus was at a lower starting point uh, this spring. It was, uh, 2.5 about instead of 4 so it is starting at a lower point and hopefully this next one it'll be close to 1 because usually as the summer goes on it gets closer to 1 so hopefully it'll be close to 1 on our next one and, but we'll see when we're done discharging and, and sampling see what the results are but ideally it'll be close to 1 then we don't have to add as much and we'll wait to go. And Sorry. Something further? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. How's the odor? I mean, I know I caught when, some whiffs of it in early spring, but where are we at now with regards to odor? When I drove out there in the spring, it was definitely way less than other years. Because uh, 
as you get closer, it gets worse. And like when you're actually in the lagoon, like it's almost eye watering in the spring. And to me, it smells like it does sometime in August. Like they're still in over because it is a lagoon, but it was definitely way less than uh, it has been every other spring since I've been here. So we're seeing some improvement. I would I would definitely say on the over absolutely, and on the uh, phosphorus it was lower than it usually is because normally the first one's between four and five, and it was uh, around two point five. Okay, thank you. And we'll have a report on that at the end of yeah. the year as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion, uh, Councilor Bobbin. I uh, just see order in Coldwinds. Where would that be ordered from? Uh, that was WRP that brought that in from Brandon. So that's an emulsion? Uh, yeah, like is it asphalt uh, mixture, like coal mix or pothole patching? Okay. Uh, do you have any idea how much a ton? Uh, it was 270, I believe. 270 a ton delivered? Yeah. Um, I see the dust control map updated, so what, what does that mean? Uh, I was just doing the map for the guys and just uh, adding in a few comments in order from the last year. Okay, uh, do you, is the rate 1.8 liters per square meter, is that what rate you're getting? I'll have a conversation with you some other time with that. Yeah. Um, pothole patching, so that would entertain the fact when that cold mix gets in, right? Yeah, they did have pothole patching. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, the street sweeper. Have we made any progress on the streets in the areas that were missed in the fall? Uh, yeah, it's out working now and uh, they figure they have about five more days left to finish Ooh. everything up. Okay, thank you. For the discussion? Go ahead. Uh, in your airport, it says talking to the contract regarding brackets for registers, composers. What is that? Uh, that's for the car block. Uh, so he has a little unit that he has to mount uh, next to the tank for the registers. That sends that in into the building for the car block. So he just needs <coughs> little brackets. Um, so they're just going back and forth on the best location to put them so that uh, they're not going to get I got you. damaged. But will be in a spot that works for them. Oh, Councilor White. Uh, just for query, what's uh, any uh, accurate evaluable valuable data relative to the technology of the at the uh, lagoons that they work in or are they not? Uh, yeah, the phosphorus level was around two and a half this spring instead of between <laughs> four and five. Um, so it was lower then, and then uh, the odor I found was significantly less when I go out there in the spring. Um, every other spring since I've been here, it was it's been quite a bit worse than it was this spring. Perfect. Thank you. For the discussion, go ahead. Uh, just if you can kind of give us a report on the cemetery on what's happening in there and where we're going with that. Yeah, that'll be in camera just because it's uh, security. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the protective services for May 2023 report be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? Um, the. Uh complaint of a person living in Legion Park tenting. Can we get a little more background on what that's about? Uh, bylaw received a report that we had an individual basically living in the Legion Park area. Uh, so they attended with RCMP and removed the tent and moved them on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, reports, uh, council reports, uh, Councilor Medwood. Oh, you're starting with me. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, what have I done? Because I don't have my agenda here in front of me, James. 
<laughs> to track what I've been doing for the last month. Uh, I did just attend today. The Services for Seniors had their AGM. Uh, and we are, I guess, in recess until September, so we have a nice little break there. Um, they are looking into planning sort of um, possibly doing a trade show in September for seniors and bringing in, um, she's going to be working on it over the summer, but hopefully bringing in like arthritis society, Alzheimer's, um, cancer care, uh, different types of things that might be of interest to the seniors and be helpful just to kind of give a little bit of information and, and whatnot. And there were, I'm going to see how that goes. Um, they have some, they're going to continue with the coffee and chat program uh, once a month. So they've got some things getting going again for programming with services for seniors and that's good to see. Um, COPP is, uh, we also are going to take the summer off for meeting. I didn't, have not done my May stats yet so I can't tell you where we're at for May. I think it was a bit slower than uh, April but we are still uh, getting out and doing patrols. And uh, I attended the uh, G Eight, G4, GX meeting. That was actually very uh, informative. A wonderful facility out there. I believe we were some of the first people to be inside and see it. I am uh, not an avid downhill skier, but I might have to check out those, dust off the cross country skis and maybe try out the uh, cross country trails. And if they've got hiking ones, I might have to get up there this summer. But it uh, looks like it's developing into a very nice. Uh, tourist attraction out there. Um, very informative uh, GIS presentation from the RCMP. And then economic development was the other main topic, so that's good to see that little things are, are getting started there as well. Um, attended the AGM for Communities That Care Interagency Joint AGM, and that went well. Uh, there's some new programming coming through them as well. And that is all I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, thank Other you. Other than to ask, what's the game plan for Roblin on Thursday? We'll probably get the direction on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so yes, as Karina said, um, Councillor Ted was said, we attended the Swan Valley Interagency. It was really, it was our annual general meeting. Um, it was really well attended, but by many service providers in, in the community. Um, I, my apologies for not being available to attend the G8. I've heard many great things that have come from the meeting, and lots of things were of interest to lots of people. Um, June 14th, the library had their meeting with Amanda Dixon from Passive Qual and Party and Company. Chris Bryson had us the audit. Um, I've also attended three other meetings with the library and three other meetings with Patrick and Qual. So, yeah, so it's been a busy few days. Um, but I'd just like to also say tomorrow is National, Aver er, National Indigenous People Day, and we have a pile of celebrations being held at the Friendship Center. So, if anybody would like to join, by all means, join me at 5 a.m. in the morning. Maybe not, but breakfast bite. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councillor White. Yeah, I've been out of town for a bit, 10 days, so I don't exactly like to be. Uh, in retrospect, I, I really believe I should quickly see our tabletop disaster exercise relative to the town and a flood was really, really important, and I appreciate that which took place. And our medical professional development meeting with the Reeves from uh, all our entities. It was really good. I think we're progressing very well there, and uh, the future looks bright. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm nothing really to report. I just have a more or less of a question. Is there such a thing as a noise bylaw in the town of Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Boychuk. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, like Councillor Medwood said, we attended the G8 meeting. It was uh, very informative, some great information provided there, some good updates on the Thunder Hill uh, project and, and their vision for the future. Um, attended the CAL on June 13th and uh, have an upcoming fire board meeting uh, tomorrow and AMM and Roblin on Thursday. 
and planning uh, Canada Day, which we need to we'll talk about. Sure. Good. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Morial. Um, so last week I attended the community of the whole meeting with the rest of council. Um, I've been meeting with various residents on a number of issues, uh, particularly in regards to uh, some of the street sweeper issues that were uh, now resolved. So uh, some of them are appreciative of seeing it back on there and getting that done, uh, especially areas that were not covered last fall before that breakdown and along with uh, some other residents regarding street drainage uh, on some of the gravel streets in an area of town that uh, was presenting some concerns along with some uh, ridges in the attempts, but that's public works and your crew got that all straightened out, I, I believe. So I had yeah. to go from there. So, um, tomorrow, where I met you uh, yesterday with the MLA, we talked about uh, a number of issues. Um, regarding health care uh, along with uh, some of the uh, other potential uh, funding announcements that may be coming to the riding. So, and tomorrow um, we'll be uh, having a stakeholder meeting with uh, Prairie Mountain Health here at the health facility followed by uh, a board meeting and the latest update on the CT scanner is it progressing slowly. It's There is incremental progress on it um, where the scanner has been selected, it's been ordered, vendors um, are chosen uh, for the sole sourced construction. Uh, location has been set, so uh, they're in right now in the uh, analysis of what exactly is needed to do accomplish the renovations. But the estimates that they have so far now are well within the uh, budgeted $3 million that was uh, quoted when it was first announced last year. So. That's uh, that project, and then tomorrow evening, as Councilor Pochuk said, uh, our representatives uh, will be uh, meeting to negotiate or continue the discussions uh, for the creation of a fire board, which, fingers crossed, hopefully we can come to an tentative agreement tomorrow night on that, as I had said. From the draft I sent out, I've had zero feedback on it, so I'm taking that as positive that mm -hmm. there's been no contentious issues on that that needs uh, some prelim discussions. Um, and then uh, on Thursday, uh, our trip to uh, the June district meeting with AMM in Roblin, where we'll be discussing uh, the resolutions we put forward along with the other resolutions by other municipalities in the, in the district. So, and that's all I have. So, okay. Okay, for me, uh, other than what I was already uh, spoken about, um, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation had a, their meeting last night, uh, and it was interesting because we're talking about the monies that has gone through the foundation, and it, it, since its inception, I guess, uh, of, of the foundation itself, uh, it's put into the community almost $2 million into uh, worthwhile uh, projects as far as you know like the hospital is one of course the uh, community commitment and the clinic and so forth and, and several different types of machinery and equipment that we've purchased uh, for all the facilities in the Swan Valley including Benito personal care home and the lodge and, and, uh, and the hospital and also uh, last week I got to meet a good group of uh, ladies uh, uh, the Swan Valley uh, Ex Lady Auxiliaries Group, and uh, they're going through a transformation process right now with new uh, members and some that are retiring and moving on. But they had a bit of money in their bank account that they had been, you know, accumulating for some time, and their uh, board made the decision that they were going to make a substantial uh, commitment or donation to the CT scan project and they made a donation of twenty thousand oh, dollars wow. so that's a huge uh, shot in the arm for us and, and the, uh, the public fundraising portion uh, of our commitment from the from the valley so that was great and congratulations to them and and those hard-working people that are doing so well you know in the hospital and also providing the services that they're that they do provide uh, as people are coming through the hospital and uh, and speaking of commitments or fundraising um, the golf course with several other sponsors is sponsoring um, a, uh, a golf tournament on Saturday and a portion of those funds that they will raise will also go to the CT scan. So 
um, some monies are coming in for the CT scan. So on the, like I said, the community commitment uh, or uh, fundraising efforts, I guess you could say. So really good stuff. Well, that, that's it for me. Mr. Poole. I do have a brief report on the agenda, just in the office dealing with uh, several bylaw issues and working with owners on some developments happening in town. Uh, I have a meeting with the rec director next week to discuss some, some short and long term uh, expectations. Uh, <clears throat> for council, obviously the, the AMM meeting on Thursday, which we receive a package and some travel instructions tomorrow. Uh, and not to forget the PMH CEO is coming tomorrow at 12.30, uh, whoever can make that. And that's it. Okay. You have a question? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, your note here on multiple residential demolitions being brought to council over the next few weeks, what are those pertaining to? Uh, it'll be, well, the one later tonight on Fifth Avenue South, and then two, <coughs> two burnt residential houses just getting approval for the demolition. Okay, and that's something uh, that is privately owned or town owned property? It's privately owned. Okay. And under the, the SBETP, what does that stand for again? That's our Swan Valley Employment and Training Project. So it's a provincial project that's sponsored by the town of Swan River. So on the training side, we're in charge of whole administration, hiring, firing, everything finances and on the work crew side similar but we also provide the uh, programming and uh, same thing administration through uh, for the two programs that are available through the province okay and the hiring of a clerk steno for project uh yeah we did have someone leaves so which is the replacement okay it's all through approved through a provincial program through budget That program, by the way, has been a very valuable program for the town of Swan River, especially with parks and recreation, where these individuals have uh, <coughs> gained employment and uh, and and uh, an experience, I guess you can say. And uh, we've been the recipient of that for several years, and, and we're very grateful that the province uh, supports us in that project. Is that the one that operates on uh, Main Street? Yes. Next to the start. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on that? All right, <clears throat> moving on. 8, 8.1. Result of Mayor Lance Jacobson, Councilor Don Bobbick, Tracy Boychuk, Count Karina Medwood, and CAO Derek Poole be appointed to the arena con contribute, contribute, contrib okay. contribution agreement uh, committee. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion. Go ahead. Something new. It's just the same. Same. Okay. You. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.2. Oh. Councillor White, you, you should hit, use your little hand or the little. Go, go, go ahead. I apologize, but. Uh, Montezuma's revenge has got me, and I'm going to come out here right shortly. So uh, I just apologize. I'm, I'm going to. I have to lay down. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks for coming out, and uh, get well better soon. Thank you, sir. Talk to you. Bye. You bet. Okay. Where was I here? Point two. Result that the amended Town of Swan River Abuse and Molestation Policy be approved. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, I was just reading this uh, this evening, and I think it's page three, towards the bottom, where it says verbal abuse is. We have a typo there. It should be, def I believe, defined. We're just missing the F. Uh, 
in which, sorry, which paragraph? Uh, page three. It's in the red writing. Oh, um, right. Verbal abuse is, and then I think it's meant to say defined, but it's missing the F. So once you have that approved, then you can go and clean that up and correct all the typos. Hmm. That was the only one I caught. Okay. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Result of the Chief Administrative Officer be designated as the representative to receive reports of abuse and molestation in accordance with the Town of Swan River Abuse and Molestation Policy. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Result that the Halverson Hauling be awarded the contract for the demolition of property on 124 Fifth Avenue South, rural number 026000.000, known as the Conrad Apartments, and that cost shall not exceed the bid price of $70,000. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a question. Um, my personal feelings are in order for me to truly be able to be on board with this resolution, it really would have been nice to have been provided with even a summary report of the bids that came in and kind of why this one was chosen over any others. It was my understanding that when we do the um, NWPTA criteria, we have a little bit of a checklist that we compare back to the tenders for what's needed and a kind of a little checklist. But it would be great, in my opinion, to receive that information so that I know that if I'm approving this, that I personally know that the work has been done and that this is, in fact, the right decision to go with. What can, further information are you looking for? Why, why are we choosing this one? Like, it, I have no information telling me why we're choosing this one. Uh, it's in, it's in the, the paper in the report. The two bids are there. If you look at under the tender and or comments uh, attached tender summary. We can we can attach the RFP in the future, but it was very, very simple. It was to demolish and dispose of the contents and take it to existing ground level. Okay, um, Councillor Powell. Just wonder, is, is this Halverson hauling, is that from Swan River? Is that somewhere, or where are they? Needle. Needle? Needle. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Boychuk. And was this, are they going to be doing that uh, shredding of the, no, we're no. not doing that. Councillor Bobber. Okay, so the contractors are starting. Uh, they indicated, oh, I don't know if the fire chief would know, I think within a month, within 30 days of the award, but I'm pretty sure they gave the fire chief a date. To be complete, is there working days involved in this? Does he have so many working days to complete the task? Uh, no, it's just get it done by a certain date, but how many working days he has, no. Okay, so yeah, and before the award of the tender, you'll be, there will be a letter of, uh, from a clearance letter from workers' compensation and a letter provided of the proper liability insurance? Yep. Okay. Chief Fedorcha. Uh If I may, the, the actual finished details on the completion date haven't been discussed uh, and finalized yet because we haven't notified anybody of getting the tender until council approves it. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Medwood. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just kind of rereading this and no, all it really tells me is that there were two bids, uh, the price to each one, it doesn't tell me why there's a difference in cost. So were they on par for work, etc., and one just comes in higher than the other, or it was there something boarding and contracting was included in their tender that maybe wasn't included. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, I have no way of knowing other than the dollar value presented, but did all the terms of the tender get met? Um, were Go some ahead. missed? <clears throat> Go ahead. First, this, this isn't a tender. So we, we this is an RFP. So the, the, rules, the rules in contracting are different with an RFP. The, if we actually did a tender, that's a legal document where, you know, we. It, it it it's a lot more flexible if we go with an RFP, but we can't. I guess we 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 could have gone more specific, but we it was very simple. It's it's disposal of and demolition of the. I don't know what information we could have added, and it's 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 a cost based RFP. Like there's. There's nothing saying that that we wanted a certain type of equipment there. There's nothing saying that we had a minimum amount of labor with with trucks, what year of trucks. Like there's we didn't go into that. We don't we don't really want to tell them how to do it. What they do have to do is separate, demolish, and dispose of the contents and bring the land back to the existing level so that we could get the cheapest price possible. The more restrictions we put on the contractor, the higher the price goes up. Do we, do we ask why Bordian is more than Halverson? No, we don't, that's up to them. It's their price to get this job done. All we're saying is get this job done, what's it going to cost us? This is the result of that. So we're not gonna find out why they're different. That's, they, they, would they bid on another project if we required that, those answers? If, if someone's requiring me to do that, I wouldn't bid for them in the future. I think you explained that. Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, so I just wondered if the dump fees are included in these prices. Uh, the dump fees have to be included in the prices, yeah. So that's the total price. Are we no increases in prices other than that? No. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so like with this, it, I guess CEO Poole says this is a request for quotations. The tender went out. This is our expectation. We want a building demolished and the end product is level grade. How you get that or how you do that, we don't care. We just want a price of how to get this end product done. If you want to do it with a pick and axe and a half ton truck and it doesn't take you four years to do it, so be it. So. This is the dollar value that we put out to get an end product. Um, we've been kicking this prop file around for two plus years now um, with issues in that. Um, we got to a point where um, this council chose that we weren't waiting on uh, insurance companies to determine if they were gonna tear it down on their own or go from that. Meanwhile, we had this eyesore within our community um, that's been for lack of a better term, a nest of activity for individuals that want to, uh, what's the word, go in there and take up residence in a, an unsafe structure, uh, squatters, that's the word, um, with that. So we, through our budget process, we allocated a certain amount of dollars in this budget. We agreed to put out an RFP for that. It has come within um, our budgeted amount for this, so um, I recommend and I will be uh, supporting this resolution to move forward to put an end to this project um, that's been a th basically a thorn in our community for the last two years. Um, we, we will be sending an invoice to the property owner though, that's the plan, correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, Councilor that's what I wanted to clarify that we're not going to be out this it'll be tacked yeah. on to that property potentially it can be but the process is going to be long what we're not getting it to back be. tomorrow that's yeah. right Councilor Megwood um, well two points one I'm not opposed to proceeding it's just it would be nice to have 
see some of those comparables as to why decisions were made because if ultimately council's making that ultimate decision it's nice to know what i'm basing that decision on so a little more detail would be appreciated and just to clarify we are going to be paying the contractor and then invoicing the property owner so okay yes mm -hmm. we'll be added to taxes as well eventually yeah. yes if it's not paid okay uh council baba you have Oh, one more question, Your Worship. Uh, just if we could get a date from the contractors for the council's best interest, I don't want to see the, you know, councilor, the deputy mayor, or we're just using figures, but I don't want to see four years come in and play with this. Just so we could get a date hammered down with the contractor. I think a firm date by him uh, to say that it will be done by then would be appreciated. Thank you. Council Medwood. When are we authorized to proceed with it? Was that the end of this month? Um, no, as soon as council passes the resolution, we will we'll give them authorization to proceed. But you know, as Chief Lerchek said, those dates have not been determined because we don't know if council's going to proceed. So then that initial notice period we gave them to do the work themselves has come and gone? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council Blanchard. No, we can't start until June 25th, 2023, because it says here in the notice to the owner, you're hereby ordered to demolish and remove all remaining structures according to permitting on or before June 25th. So I'm assuming we'd have to wait till after that, which mm -hmm. I'm thinking is... It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next exactly. week. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.5. Result of the Swan Valley Planning District audited financial statements for the year end of December 31st, 2022, be received. Moved by Councillor Boynchak, seconded by Councillor uh, Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.6 Result of the Northwest Round of an Exhibition being held July 27th to 30th. 2023 in the town of Swan River be declared a significant community event. Moved by Councillor Bobic, second by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? As I mentioned this, I think a couple times that the community is allowed to declare community events. This allows them to, some establishes to be open longer in different hours. And yeah. I think it has something to do with a little bit with the um, uh, liquor lottery. lotteries a little bit too so i think that has part of it so okay all in favor it's carried 8.7 result of the northwest regional library audited financial statements for the year end december 31st 2022 be received moved by councillor medwood seconded by Councilor Boychuk, discussion? I did have one Go ahead. question. Um, on the budget it says $4,150 in fines, and then the actual was only $107. Um, I'm just wondering about that, if they're not collecting them, is that a potential another revenue stream for the library? Go ahead. No, they haven't been collecting. They plan to. Oh, if it is being put into motion, that that would be in a next day plan. And then just following up on that, it also mentions fines and fees, and copies for that. So, doesn't look like there's any. I don't know if nobody uses it to maybe copy, or they are just not keeping track, or or what. But another thing I kind of noticed on that. Like as per which one is that? Right. Oh. There's fines. It's in the email on the proposed budget from okay. them uh, down there. It says fines and fees for copies. So I'm thinking that's another stream of revenue that it's zero. Like, so they haven't been, and we're not budgeting anything for that. Maybe maybe people don't use it. I don't know. It hasn't been used very much, especially oh. without the computers. I don't know oh. the computers it was. That's it. Okay. So hopefully it will come. Go ahead. Um, my question is pertaining to the email of the 2023. The emails of the next resolution? Okay. So for the discussion on the uh, financial statements, 
All in favor? It's carried. 8.8. .8. Whereas the Town of Swan River 2023 financial plan included a contribution to the Northwest Regional Library in the amount of $98,142.30 was included in the budget attached to an email dated April the 10th, 2023. Therefore, be it resolved that the $98,142.30 less advances in funding already paid totaling $20,000 to be paid to the Northwest Regional Library as a Town of Swan River's contribution for the 2023 fiscal year. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Um. Are we aware that in that email the total revenue is $260,002.94 and the total expenses still represent $269,637.56, which is a, just shy of $10,000 over budget? And has there been any progress on balancing that? Yeah, we've been working on it, and we've been working on it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so it does say that in the attachment, but the resolution states that we haven't gotten the budget yet, but this is council passing 98,142.30 for the library budget for 2023. That's what this is. So regardless of the attachment, the resolution allows the library board 98,142.30 from the town of Right. And they will deal with the, how they're, they're budgeting and everything else as a, as a board. Yes. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? Oh, I was sorry. just wondering about the wording where it says, like, already paid totaling 20000 Like, balance to be paid? Or, I don't know, just... I think it's clear where it yeah. says less advances in funding already paid, mm -hmm. totally twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. So less the twenty thousand dollars. I don't mm -hmm. think it has to show, you know. Balance only. Pay the, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. We've we've paid twenty, so what we're with this resolution we're authorized to go a further seventy eight point forty two three. Right. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Now eight point nine. Resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer sign the access agreement between the Town of Swan River and the Province of Manitoba in order to share information to support situation awareness, awareness uh, emergency preparedness, response, decision making, and analysis. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Well, I didn't know if you had it. 9.9.1. Nine Result that the Town of Swan River support and fund the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce Community Safety Watch Program as per the attached proposal. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion. Mayor um, I guess we had a lengthy discussion about this last week at the community of the whole meeting um, where uh, a number of projects or avenues where we could um, expend the, the money that we have in our crime re uh, prevention reserve um, which could be uh, GIS uh, uh, tearing down buildings uh, the RCMP uh, CCTV program, what well, not? Uh, yeah. So the the resolution uh, reads and uh, for clarity, that's uh, for the resolution is is stating to the community uh, patrol vehicle from the chamber of commerce proposal, correct? That's due to it being tabled. So it was tabled. So this resolution must go. Yeah. To so we talked about it at the last uh, town meeting uh, where we sought further clarification. So um, as my previous discussion at community our council uh, committee of the whole meeting um, I cannot support this resolution for the community uh, patrol vehicle that's proposed by the Chamber of Commerce and I suggest that uh, the funds be diverted uh, or supported to the uh, CCTV uh, program uh, to enhance the 
criminal forfeiture funds that we receive for that to be closer to completion with that project versus uh, the community patrol vehicle from the Chamber of Commerce, which in my opinion very similarly mirrors the COPP program and create blurring of the lines between the two programs and then ultimately end in the, uh, both programs failing instead of one being successful. And that would have to be come in a different resolution, obviously. So further discussion? Council Bobby. So this $50,000 council put in was in last year's budget, right? Yes. yes. So we're saying, so how long would it take if we go to the other route which you propose there right now? So we'll be sitting out there another year? The, to, to go to CCTV, no. we can do a motion. Can we uh, amend this? Uh, we'll have to give a notice of motion because Mr. White's not here. Right. Right. So I, I just, I don't know. I, we seem to sit here and talk a lot about this, the crime and the money, and we put money in, but we don't do anything. Like, I mean, I don't know if it's a good idea, and I don't know if it's a bad idea. But I do think that we've got to move forward on something here. Like, we, we end up talking about everything, but we never do anything. So I we could support this and give it a chance. I mean, we spent $50,000 on a lot worse things, I hate to tell you. But I mean, at the same time, we're actually doing, I feel, if we don't support this, we're doing nothing. We're going to put it on the table again, and we're not moving forward. The people of the town of Flounder deserve us to do something. And I don't care if it's wrong. We've got to try. And I don't think we're trying by putting this up. So I will be supporting this resolution. Okay. For the discussion? All in favor? Oh, did you have a question? I was just going to comment that um, my thoughts are still, uh, if we have to sit and pick and choose, I still lean towards the GIS unit funding. If that's what we're going to look to bring into the community, and if we have zero dollars at the moment to go towards that, I would much rather see this as being something to go towards it versus having nothing to go towards that. Okay. Council Mollett. So we looked at the prices of GIS. Do you honestly think that the town founder is going to afford $200,000 per person here for the next few years at our tax rate right now? For three people, that's six hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a separate debate. First brought to the table. Go ahead. Okay. So if we have different thoughts on this, um, we vote and say this is not. Um, it's defeated. Can we just bring a motion with? I tend where, to do that. Yeah, like that's what 12. I would do too. Is it make a motion where I would like to see it and then just vote on it next council. Mm -hmm. Can do, but it all depends on what happens. Yeah, if. Yeah. Okay, further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? So then that's defeated. Ten point one. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number three zero three eight five to number three zero four three one, totaling two hundred thousand four hundred and twenty three dollars and sixty five cents. As listed on Schedule A, payroll accounts checks number 5324 to 5328, totaling 122155 and 46 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling 16891 and 93 cents as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. On the uh, um, explanation report, uh, check 30397 for formal motors, $10,499.22 for unit number 115. What, unit, what piece of equipment is that? Uh, so that's a dump truck and uh, the hydraulic controls went on that so they need to be replaced. And is that the same dump truck that had a service bill not too long ago? Uh, no, I believe that was a different dump truck. Okay. That's what I wanted to double check because, um, yeah. Further discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, 30396 traffic gravel. Can you tell me how many yards that is? Cubic yards? Uh, I think it was around 400. That was traffic gravel. And bed run. We use 
use traffic, not, not a base? Uh, we do use a base when we're building the roads, the traffic gravel is just for topping them. So is there any specs done, or is any tests ever done on any of that? Uh, we do have specs for that. Pardon me? Uh, we do have specs for that. I'd have to pull up the uh, specs for that. Okay, thank you. I can send you that. Could be Mayor Morio. Uh, check number 30398, uh, $60 for the rental of lights in the town office for King's Coronation. Uh, did we, what did we do to? Um, we wanted to do something for the Coronation, so it was either green or purple lights, and we had the ability to rent that from a local wedding planner, so we did. So they were up from Friday till the Monday. What the government was asking for was municipalities and communities to get behind it and and, and illuminate during that time. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't in town, so I oh, went to see okay. that. So yeah. I'm going, what is this? Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Medwood. Uh, check 30405 for Northern Specialties. Uh, $1,500 on styrofoam nails, blades, cement, doorknobs. What is that for? Uh, sorry, what was the check number? 30405. We will have to get back. I mean, it's in, yeah. The styrofoam would have been for digs, most likely. But uh, yeah, I'll have to pull up that invoice. There's one of the doorknobs on the end of it that made me question why are we getting doorknobs? Well, uh, if the storage sheds at the cemetery was busted in that might be a replacement door knob for there. Uh, this one wouldn't be because we'll that's uh, yeah. earlier. Took a stab at it. <laughs> yeah. We can get back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have one more. The 30416 uh, Swanover Home Hardware for the traffic paint and thinner. It's not necessarily directly related to the cost, but um, who does the painting? Is it our workers or do we contract somebody? Our workers do it. Okay, because I was just wondering because I know there was one street that I'm not sure when they painted it in relation to the rain, but it looked like it was getting washed off. So I was just going to wonder, like, does that mean our workers are available to kind of go back and do patchwork on? Where was that? It would have been on it would have been all around Taylor six. School in that area. Okay. Yeah, around your place and all that. They, yeah. they, they painted it at between 8 and 9 or 8.30, and within half an hour, they got chased away and the, the paint just Yeah, and over. there's one and you could just see the puddle was like creamy white from the yeah. paint. So, six out of north? Yeah. Yes, six out of north. So we, I forgot to go back and look to see if it's um, been redone or not, but I was just wondering so if it's possible if we can maybe just make sure we get back to some of the things that might have yeah. if, if any time that you see anything like that, just let yeah, Mr. Poole know yeah. that or Mr. Yeah. Harvey. So. Yeah, they did the crosswalk at this Centennial Arena. They patched that one up already because it looked... Yeah, and they may old. very well have. It's just when I saw it on here that triggered my memory that, oh yeah, I meant to mention something. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 10.2. Result of the draft audited Canada Community Building Fund annual expenditure report for the year ended December 31st, 2022 be approved and the independent auditor's report thereon be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Resolve that the following unpaid utility accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective July the 1st, 2023. Utility account number 2094-0000.15, 6171. Uh, rule number one zero nine triple zero dot triple zero two one eight one four zero four dot zero three ninety eight eighty seven zero two one six zero zero dot triple zero 
0253 totaling $1,179.51. Moved by Councillor Bob Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas the Town of Swan River Bylaw number 19, 2022, provide, provided that for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for the replacement of the Swan River. Fire Department Pumper 1 with all the required equipment as a local improvement. And whereas the Town Council resolved at its meeting on February the 21st, 2023, that the Town of Swan River purchase a 2024 Acres Vortex Series Pumper Emergency Vehicle on a Freightliner M2-106 Series Chassis Fire Truck, including required equipment along with optional equipment as per Schedule A from Acres Industry Incorporated for the amount of $807,778.18 plus the applicable taxes, of which $72,649.02 plus applicable taxes was needed for firefighting equipment. And whereas the Town Council wishes to use uh, funds from the, uh, from the fire truck replacement reserve to purchase the needed firefighting equipment and the reserve has sufficient balance for such. Therefore, be it resolved that $72,649.02 plus applicable taxes be transferred from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund once the firefighting equipment has been purchased. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, yes, I brought this uh, motion forward for tonight's meeting. Um, as we all know, as part of when we had the discussion uh, to purchase the, the, the fire truck, there was the option to have additional equipment as per the Schedule A included with that uh, purchase price um, at a discount and be able to um, receive that uh, additional equipment um, to be able to get the, both the PST and GST um, exempt from it um, as it is part of a complete truck purchase versus if you just purchase, purchase them separately. Um, and I'm informed uh, by our fire chief that uh, the supplier uh, should be delivering this optional equipment in the early part of July. Um, and as part of our negotiations, uh, our fire reserve is not going towards uh, the fire board because that's money separate that has been collected separately and contributed solely by the town as compared to in the previous years when it was by both entities. Uh, so this fund is, has sufficient balance to cover off that portion of the, the purchase which would ultimately reduce the amount of the, the venture that would be uh, required uh, for the, the truck. So. Um, so the, the resulting debenture, if we use the reserve funds for this uh, purchase, then you take $72,000 off that $807,000, reducing um, both interest in the long term and the more we can tuck away or nibble away at that uh, amount with any reserve that we can uh, with the higher interest rates, it's prudent that we can uh, uh, use our reserve to pay for that as go from there. Okay. And this would allow, uh, since this is, uh, purchased by reserve, this equipment would be remain sole property of the town, uh, which would be as part of the negotiations given to the board to use, but if in the event of anything happened or whatever, it would be like with any other equipment that's in the initial uh, inventory remains property of the town. So. Okay. Councilor Medwood. Um, well, for starters, I have no objection to your um, thoughts and goal. What I do have an objection to is it's called a fire truck reserve fund, not a fire equipment reserve fund. So on one hand, I'm thinking at the price and expense of fire equipment and the rate it needs to be replaced, we should be thinking about maybe starting a fire equipment reserve fund if needed. I don't know how that plays into the board. 
and um, ultimately why aren't we just using the fire truck reserve fund to put towards the fire truck itself period if that's what the fund was created for because I am opposed to taking money out of a fire truck reserve fund to use for something else, even if it is fire equipment, because then we have no money in the account for a fire truck, but we need a fire truck, which has put us in the position we're currently in, where we have a lot less money for a fire truck because we have been dipping into that reserve for equipment and for other gear and for other expenses. So now when we need a fire truck, instead of having maybe $300,000, we have a lot less. So I'm kind of opposed for starting a reserve for a purpose and then diverting that money to something else. I don't like that idea. Okay. Uh, Councilor Boyd, Chuck, and then I'll go to CFO Gadina. I was just wanting to confirm that with that equipment coming prior to the truck that we still got that deal. That yes. Yeah, okay. CFO Gadina. Uh, the town did have a firefighting equipment reserve fund for many years, but town council decided a few years ago to cl close it out. And since then, firefighting equipment has been sometimes funded from that fire truck replacement reserve fund. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mario and then Councilor Baldick. And, and just for clarification, it, should the uh, be successful in forming a fire board with our neighbors, um, the town itself would not be contributing to fire truck. It would be through contributions right. through the fire board that would be looking after that. The town would not be purchasing fire trucks on its own. Right. So the the it would become a stagnant reserve. Council Bob. So this equipment is optional, like our brand here. Yeah. So what happens to the equipment that's in the fire truck right now? That we do have to set and then that move forward to the other truck or we yes. it's all different or what's uh, how do we get there i guess i can uh, divert that to uh chief Rorschach. so the uh, 20 year old equipment that we have on the truck right now the gas powered hydraulic system would go into the bumper two which would be the older of the two trucks as a backup system in case we have uh, multiple scenes or something should fail with the electric system uh, the new new tools we're getting now are all battery operated, um, um, very good equipment, uh, but you always need a backup just in case. There really is no market value this day and age for a 20 year set of old hydraulic tools. Okay, thank you. Councilor Medwood. Um, if moving forward and the establishment of the fire board means that we would essentially be closing out the fire truck reserve, then I would propose at that point in time we make the resolution because it's my understanding, fire board or not, the town of Swan River is going to be carrying a debt and a loan for this fire truck or a good portion of it. So I would still say moving forward, we then make a resolution to use that fire truck reserve fund to go towards that debt and make either one large lump sum payment after it's been established or use it as an upfront payment to reduce the amount that we're borrowing. And that resolution can come forward at the time of the purchase, I would so suppose, or what council chooses. Um, council Ballard. So I'm under the impression the new truck doesn't come for two years. Okay. Next spring it should be. Next year so this down. equipment purchased. Will it be used till next spring or will it be? Yes, yeah, it's service as soon as it's here. Pardon me? It can go into service as soon as it's here. You had a question? <coughs> Just a, a comment to Councilor Medwin. Um, basically, this is a contribution to that final invoice of the truck. If we don't, like you're, you're suggesting that we use that reserve to pay off to reduce the, the fire truck cost, this is exactly what it's doing. The total cost is $807,000 and $778. This is just taking seventy-two thousand dollars off of that now instead of next year. Right. So. Okay. That I understand. I'm still opposed to a resolution putting money from a reserve earmarked for a fire truck towards fire equipment, and to me that doesn't. If we rephrase the resolution to say it's going towards the purchase of the fire truck which is where that money is earmarked for, I probably wouldn't have an issue with it. 
I, th I think it's it's just in the title of the reserve. So yes, the reserve is called fire truck replacement reserve, but in the bylaw that council passed that created that reserve, it states fire truck plus applicable equipment. Anything to do with the fire fire department operations can be used in that reserve. But the, the title of it is fire truck replacement reserve. So I think that's as long as the public knows that that reserve is intended for trucks and equipment. We, we, would be, we cannot use uh, we cannot use a reserve for what it's not intended for. So to say that is just not true. <coughs> that reserve was built to be intended for equipment and trucks. It's just titled fire truck replacement reserve. If that answers. Okay. Last one. Just run me by this one more time why we need to purchase this now. Purchase what? This additional equipment. Well, we already purchased, mm -hmm. we already agreed to back then. It's just that the delivery is coming now instead of. We passed this. Yeah. But so why is it coming now? It's ready to come. Yep. We. we the resolution was passed to purchase, so now the, the equipment is now coming. The resolution never said anything about taking it out of reserve. At that time, no. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? I'm opposed, sorry. Okay, let's do this again. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 10.5. Result of financial statements for the five months ending May 31st, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved, uh, moved by, sorry, Councillor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. I just got to find my highlighted marks here. So, uh, page five. And it is under transportation services. We have our boulevards and our, I think it is the storm sewers. They're both exceeding 100%. Is that normal for this time of year? Sorry, it's just loading right now. Um, most of the work is done this rate. It shouldn't exceed 100%. Uh, so I'll do a little report on that for council but most of that work is done in the springtime. Sorry, it's just loading. So I could, but we'll have a report on that for council and what happened there while I went over. Okay. And let me just scroll down to like find the next one. Um, it's page six. No, oh, that's not one of them. Sorry, it's, on here it's saying page seven, uh, under expenses, I've got, I think it is for parking lot and canteen. They're well over 100%. Is that typical for this time of year? And that's gonna be under the uh, this one is for the Centennial Arena. Um, again, I'll, I can't get anything on, I can't even get the fire truck resolution. Does anyone else have it? It's really it's very slow. slow. Yeah, I can't. I have this slow. open from previously because I highlight everything and I can't close it or so the, removes my highlights. It's which line, just so I get it written down here. Uh, let me just make sure I'm reading the right one because I, think I just highlighted the number. Uh, it'll be the canteen and the parking lot because the parking lot saying 131 percent and the canteen saying 167 percent. So if you can take that, maybe get uh, uh, the rec department to answer that question. Yeah. Go to the next one. Uh, I know there's another one or two because there's some in here that are almost close to 300 percent. So under the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center on page eight, uh, under expenses for insurance and security, 
And for training and education, we're sitting at 88, 89%. Is that normal for this time of year? Yes, the insurance has been paid for the whole year. It's, it's, it, it goes from uh, April 1 to March 31, so we've already paid the whole year's premium. It's, it's the whole year of insurance expenses there already. And in, in regards to training and education for the REC, uh, yes, the, they do have to typically train uh, new students that come in. But I would, I've got to get a detail I can get brand to okay. follow up on that. Perfect, thank you. Uh, the next one being page nine for general operating fund reserve and expenses, uh, parks and playgrounds. I under expenses, it's showing advertising and publications at 239.5% and equipment usage recovery at 232% um, and rotary trails at 82.2%. I can find out exactly what the advertisement was for. Actually, the equipment recovery just means an overestimate of what was accounted for in each account, so that. But advertising, like it's budgeted at $100, and they spent $230, I could have been like advertising for the position or something like that. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Like, it's, yeah. it's, we're talk, when we're talking 239% out of, it's $139. You know, like it's easy that those numbers will look absolutely crazy. But when we're budgeting for advertising, especially in this case here, when it could have been something in the park or whatever, they could, but yeah. if you can find the explanation, I guess. Yeah, we could, we'll, we'll definitely follow up. That would be great because it is kind of a concern because we're only five months into the year, which puts us at about 40-ish percent of the budget for the most part, uh, with exceptions. So if that's going to be a continuing trend and there's more to be spending, then where are those budget dollars coming from? Okay. The advertising was all for a new recreation director, so the recreation director has been hired, so there will be no more advertising. <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> um, for the Veterans Community Hall, I got resale items at 104.7%. Um, expenses. What are the resale items out of the Veterans Hall? That would be uh, mostly mixed sales. So it all depends on what events are going to be there and whether they want to sell mix or not. Oh, so like your drinks and beverages? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So we actually get money back on on that? Yes. Yes. The, the, the mix that's used by rental groups is the invoice to them. Okay, thank you. Council Boyshaw. Oh, I was just going to say um, that Parks and Recreation, you're probably dividing up the advertising expense over pool, arena, parks and rec, right? Like every little bit you divide it yes. up, right? Yeah. Yes, that, that was split between uh, pool, arena, and parks. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the discussion. Go ahead. Uh, page 16, uh, this is the Handy Transit Operating Fund Revenue and Expenses. So under expenditures, we are at 203.8% for van insurance and license. That, that was a budgeting mistake. Uh, the, the large handy van was out of commission for an extended period of time and, and the budget reflected that, but it should have been an increase because uh, the handy van came back into commission, so that was just a budgeting error. Okay, and are we going to be able to cover that in the amount budgeted for 2023? Well, the user fees are already at $7,500, it was a budget of 6000 so Mm -hmm. We've already collected more, fifteen hundred dollars more than budgeted on user fees. Good point. Okay. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried.
Are you are you able to keep up still? No? I've got everything on paper. Oh, okay. It's basically not working anymore. Uh, Ten point six. Whereas sections three to six of the municipal act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes, and so su subsections three hundred six and three hundred six point one provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from that whole assessment services. Therefore, being resolved that the assessment alterations made for Manitoba Assessment Services on January 23rd, March 3rd, April 21st, May 15th, and June 12th, 2023, be made to the 2023 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $44,650.07 and the resulting reductions totaling $5,332.72. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.7. Result of the 2023 annual contribution to the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, incorporated for the fund for the recruitment and retention of medical professionals, calculated at $16 per capita and amounting to $64,784 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor uh, Morio, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Bobek. How do you calculate it at $16? How did you get there? It's been about that for some time, but go ahead. That was an agreement that all four municipalities made uh, years ago at one of the G4 meetings. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe it was Councillor Manish at the time had proposed that amount and it's just an agreement now that's been extended over a number of years. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. Mm -hmm. 10.8. Result of the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan Valley Association for Community Living included in the 2023 financial plan be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Bobek. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Same one I bring up every time. Um, based on our current policy that's in place, we should be seeing for this amount a um, financial plan by an accredited uh, um, accountant in order to approve said grant. So if we're going to follow our existing policy, do we have a financial statement from an accredited accountant to go with this request? I believe if it's over $5,000, they need that. Anything under $5,000, it's not required. No, between $1,000 and $5,000, it requires the accredited uh, accountant statement, and we do, the part three was that we do not grant above $5,000. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I did, did I have everybody vote? I didn't even see if anybody voted. Did you vote? Okay, so let's do this again. All in favor? Opposed? So then that means the tie vote is defeated. So we'll have to let the Association of Community Living know that they will not be receiving their annual grant. I would like to see this come back to the table. Then once. you have to do that in notice of motion, okay? okay? Result of the annual grant of $4,000 to the Swan Valley Historical Museum included in the 2023 financial plan be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Same as the one before. Our current policy requires an accredited accountant financial statement to go with a request of this size. Do we have that available? No. Okay. For the discussion, Councillor Bobbick. So I guess, how did they get here? I guess is my question. So these are grants that we've given them historically. But how did, it, how did the motion come to the table when it doesn't meet the criteria? 
No, it, it's come here annually. I'm not going to deny these people. Council has not been consistent on donations. So these, the direction has been, it comes to council for three years. Just because we've met at a cow meeting a few times to discuss this, that doesn't change. It'll still come to council until you guys give me a consistent decision on what to do with donations. Councilor Powell. No, I just wondered that. You mean I, I? I know we did we did discuss that and stuff, and and I hate to not, but we discussed not providing these grants at one point. You mean uh, unless they had that? So it, that's that's my only question. Because I definitely like it's not that I would not want to grant anybody, but we did kind of put that into place and so discuss that. Okay, go ahead. I concur with Councillor Powell. Like I'm not opposed to the money going to these organizations. What I'm opposed to is council not following their own policies. So if council previously has put a policy in place, it's up to the current council to either uphold that policy or get moving on having a new policy put in place that we can and will uphold and agree to. But we're not meeting that whole open, honest, transparent, trustworthy if we're passing policies and bylaws that we're not even going to enforce or we're going to pick and choose how we follow them. That's not meeting any of that criteria that we want to speak to and represent from a council. So we need to figure out how we're going to do this moving forward because right now this doesn't meet the criteria of our existing policy. Okay. Council Boycha. Um, I guess further to the fact, like we are reviewing that bylaw right now. We still have to function and, and do things while we're doing it. There was an email sent out by Uriah with the, some of the information. Um, so I think that's coming up on another, is that coming up on the next call? Yeah. So we'll get there. Um, in the meantime, I guess life does go on. Um, do we know if the Swan Valley Historical Museum does get audited? Like, do they have a... Can we table this, find that out if they do get our get a copy of it, and then see if we'll get it on the next meeting? Years ago, the museum used to get audited financial statements, but then they decided they don't need an audit anymore. So it has been, it has been a notice to reader for quite a few years now. It looks like the last time the town count has received a copy of any kind of financial statement was 2018, and it was not audited. It's been quite some time since they had audited financial statements. Okay. And so basically, if we ask them to do an audit, this money that we're <coughs> donating to them is just going to go to an accounting firm. That's correct. So it would be mute. Go ahead. Um, ever since I've been on council, it's been council's view that these there's three these three organizations are not ad hoc or one time come uh, for. A grant. These are long-standing contributions that are factored into our budget with a budget line that's approved in our budget and we've been supporting and granting these long-standing organizations for years. So through the donation policies these three organizations have not traditionally been included in that because these are been long-standing and we've been granting these operational grants to them through our budget process and not on an application annual basis like tables and chairs. This is an annual operating grant that's factored into our, our budget that's approved every spring. Okay, uh, Councilor Powell. Well, how are we supposed to know that? How, how, how are we supposed to know that? The policy well, doesn't clarify or Councilor Powell, sir. How are we supposed to know that this is what you do like, uh, as new councillors? We had, I have no idea that this is something that you, you mean. It just happens every year. Like, I, I mm -hmm. truly don't. Well, it's an annual and, grant. Yeah. Oh, but, so. And we budgeted for it and when we're actually doing our budget. We're actually budgeting for it. Okay. Go ahead. I've brought this up even through the budgeting process. Our current bylaw does not stipulate between annual or ad hoc. It simply says this is the criteria. You either meet it or you don't meet it. Uh, I am perfectly fine with the motion to table this, and if it's possible still, because we're in the same meeting, oh, but we're missing Councillor White, I would like to go back and table the other one. Um, it's been voted on already. Um, so uh, go ahead. I, I guess I just feel we're, we're caught up in the words. So. 
if we call this expenditures to the muse museum, expenditure to the community living, then this mm -hmm. is all okay because it's approved in the financial plan. We, mm -hmm. we, we planned on expending these dollars for this. However you want to term it, if we want to term it donations, then it can't be allowed. If we want to term it as an expenditure to these community groups, then it's completely allowed and in our financial plan. But uh, it's, it's how we want to term this. It's in words. Uh, we've expended, we've budgeted in and, and passed these in our financial plan for years. Call it donation, call it expenditure. These community groups, uh, I guess they'll be sure we need for us to pass our donation policy if that's what this is going to be. Go ahead. Uh, the resolution states grant, so it's not even worded as an expenditure. Uh, so that means it follows the grant and donation policy. Go ahead. Can we amend this resolution so that it says resolve that the annual expenditure of $4,000 to the Swan Valley Historical Museum included in the 2023 financial plan be approved for payment? No. You can because then the mover and the seconder would have to agree to it. Okay. Is that what you're mm -hmm. Yes, proposing? that's what I'm proposing. I'm opposed to that. Okay, so who's the mover and the seconder? Well, I will. No, no, oh. uh, Councillor Medwood and Councillor Powell. Okay, so the event where the mover de declines, then what, what's the rule there? It doesn't, can't be amended. Uh, you vote it as is. Uh, can we table this? You, you can make a motion to table. That's what I'm going to do then, make a motion to table. Okay, so and, oh, and, change the, and change the. So that, you can't do that yet. So motion to table. Uh, seconded oh, by uh, Councillor Powell. Um, all in favor? Okay, so then it's tabled. No further discussion. No further discussion. <coughs> okay, 11, 11.1. 11 Resolve the bylaw number 5, 2023, being the bylaw of the town of Swanover, to describe the town of Swanover council procedures be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Resolve the bylaw number 5, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover, to set Town of Swanover Council procedures be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Okay, this is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Make sure you read over your procedures for the next meeting because it's going to be a little different. 12. Notice of motion. Councilor or Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, I'm putting forward a motion that administration can massage that uh, the fifty thousand dollar crime reserve that we have be contributed to the uh, uh, criminal forfeiture CCTV program project. So. That's a motion right now. We get the vote on that right now, or is that at the next that's meeting? A motion. So no, it's just a it's notice of motion for the next meeting. Correct. Okay, there's no discussion. No. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Is this where one could put do a notice of motion for, with regards to ACL? Because I yes. would like them yes. to be that's at okay. this meeting. Yeah, I would like them to be notified to reapply so that we get our ducks in a row with regards to our policy and either let them know if they resubmit with a final financial statement and or once we pass a new by, uh, policy. I don't know. It's the, the notice of motion is not uh, necessarily with giving uh, direction. direction. No. Uh, notice of motion is to is reconsider that resolution. Reconsider the resolution. Yeah. Okay. So I would like us to reconsider the resolution even if it is to be let's so then, table it. So then that, that will actually then come back to our next meeting for discussion. That's correct. And there's no more discussion on that either. Okay. 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 Anything more? 
Okay. Um, practice for next week. Practice for next week. <laughs> Okay, so then that's, uh, no debate into those. Those are two notice of motions already. Those will come for at the next meeting. Go ahead. Well, I'm not sure I need a notice of motion for this, but to discuss the kind of debate, finalizing kind of some of the details. We can do that after the meeting. Okay. Good. That's all I wanted. Question with regards to when we say the next meeting, is that next Tuesday, June 27th, we're starting the 7 p.m.s, or is that the July 4th? The July, July our the next regular, regular meeting. Town Council. Okay, Not so a meeting. our cow meeting is still at 7.30, or are we moving those to 7 o'clock as well for consistency? 7, season? where I think we're going to, our plan was to change them all to 7. Okay, so starting June 27th, yes. I just need to make sure, so I show up at the right time. <laughs> uh, maybe I misunderstood, uh, didn't hear you, because I thought maybe you're talking about notice of motion. And when that was coming back, it won't be coming in to uh, The notice during, of motion will come yes. in on July 4th. July, yeah. yes. I'm assuming Uriah will update all that in the calendar. Next uh, he's, he's been, been working on that already. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. You had already been yeah. seeing that yeah. already yeah. happen. We have to have it passed. Yeah. 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 Okay. 13. Resolve the pursuit of sections 152. Three of the Municipal Act Council go in the committee and close the meeting to the public. We have the Birchwood Cemetery to discuss. Um, moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's carried. Um, resolve this regular meeting of Council and I'll be adjourned at 9.25 p.m. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.